Chapter 8 and 26 You are strange people. Kelp stared at the chef in question, watching his every move. Right now, he was filling the dough, stretching it out, and performing a type of routine in front of one of the tables. It was a way to enhance their experience, and the way he stretched out the dough and spun it in the air, it was as if he had been doing it for years, perfecting his craftsmanship. That man was someone who used to be a Pagna warrior? Kelp thought. Why would a Pagna warrior be a chef? And from the look of things, that person has been a chef for years with how skilled he is. With Kelp and his group being Pagna warriors themselves, they knew the pride of being a warrior, which was why they couldn't understand someone who would give up such a thing. Looking back at the customers that were speaking, Kelp wanted to ask if they were sure they had the right person, but they were already gone. What should we do, sir? One of the altar members asked. Do you want to try and question the chef? Kelp waved his hand. They have to be mistaken. That can't be one of the warriors. There are plenty of warriors at these tables from the Dark Faction. Let's try to get friendly with them, buy them a few drinks, and find out what happened. Window.pubfuturetag equals window.pubfuturetag, window.pubfuturetag.push, unit 648C3C for 3270 f 9 ce 2 ID PF46 Thursday 1. Kelp and his group were quick to enact their plan, and it had worked. With a few drinks down the other's bellies, their lips had become somewhat looser. And Kelp was getting answers to his questions, but they weren't what he had expected. He learned of the warriors, how young they were, and the power they wielded, as well as warriors they had never seen before helping them fight. Some wielded special weapons in their attacks as well. Things weren't making sense, how such people could get such strength and the weapons that they had used. On top of that, the interesting fact Kelp learned was about the items taken from them. Artifacts left within the clans for so long. It was burying a deep hatred among some of the clans with the newcomers, but there was nothing they could do. Eventually, after going around the entire restaurant, Kelp and his group returned to their seats and ordered more drinks. They needed to, in order to stay in the restaurant a little while longer. What do we do now? Although we found out some information, and maybe what this Dark Magus ordered others to do, I don't think this is what Alter was after, one of the guys said. You're right, we can't go empty-handed. We will have to dig deeper, maybe head to some of the clans, and head to the academy if need be, Kelp replied. Isn't that risky? And how can we be sure they'll answer any questions we have anyway? Kelp reached into his pocket and pulled out a rounded, meat-like stick. It looked somewhat like a chopstick, but it was thicker and more rounded on both ends. This is a little gift from one of the programmers. It's the first time they've given me such an artifact. Hold this in front of a person's eyes, ask them anything, and they will have to tell the truth. Kelp then passed it to one of his allies, Pons, who had been in his group for the longest time. This really works? Pons asked, looking at it. Try it out here if you want, Kelp said. It was then that Pons held up the device and went to hold it in front of one of the fellow members in the group, but Kelp reached out and grabbed his wrist, shaking his head. Not on us, Kelp stated. Have you not heard from the other squads? The other members shook their heads and leaned in closer, knowing full well this would be something others shouldn't hear. Some of the items in Altar are powerful, and they practically have no downside, but a lot of the items given to groups like us sometimes seem to have drawbacks. Now, Alter would never give out something that would harm our squads. After all, no one would use such items and there would be a lot of trust lost in Alter. But they don't fully explain the effects it say and have on others. What do you mean? Pons asked. Let me give you an example. That item certainly does what they told me it will allow us to ask any question and get the truth, but there could be side effects on the person used. Maybe they lose their memory of the last two years. Perhaps a year of their life would be taken, or maybe even they can never speak again. These are the types of things that have been spoken about from the other squads. And they don't tell us this? Another member shouted. While the member who was moments away from having the artifact used on him was staring ahead at Pons, thinking what could have happened if Kelp hadn't explained in time. At some point, 
they have to test some of these items' effects. Some might not be so obvious, and as I said, none of them harm us, so it's not to worry. Anyway, we should probably find out what side effects it has before we start entering clans with this thing, Kelp said, gesturing for Pons to get to work with the item. Understanding the assignment, Pons went to the closest table they had been friendly with for a while now. He offered to buy them a drink, and then, under the guise of a magic trick, Pons pulled out the special device and held it right in front of the man. He then lifted his hand, ready to press his thumb on the top to activate the artifact, pushing down, until a hand reached out and grabbed him by his wrist. What are you exactly doing with that? Pons looked at the man that grabbed his hand and noticed the white clothing. It was the chef, the one they had been told about. You guys have been acting strange ever since you got in here, Skylar said. Chapter 8 Hunt 27 Don't Break the Rule In the perfect noodle shop, the chefs behind their cooking counters, as well as the customers that would regularly come, had all stopped what they were doing for a moment. They looked at the scene playing out with Skylar and had large smiles on their faces. Kelp and the other warriors noticed the strange looks the others were giving as well. Seriously, what is up with this restaurant? Kelp thought. Little did they know that what Skylar had just done was something he had recently been doing on the regular, and everyone was waiting to see what would happen next. Are we taking bets on this one? One of the chefs asked. I'll say five minutes. These guys look a bit stronger than the last lot, another added. Well, you know it takes longer because of Zahn's and Rain's rules, right? That nothing in the shop can get destroyed. Window.pub future tag equals window.pub future tag window.pubfuturetag.push unit 64833F92E2 ID pf 463 u one The reason they were looking with anticipation and smiles was because of what Skylar had done since he had joined. No one quite knew the exact reason why, but since Skylar had come to work for them, he had butted heads with a large number of guests. It happened from time to time, between waiters and the chefs themselves. Even Rain got a bit too emotional in the past when someone would criticize his cooking. In this case, though, maybe it was the buildup of the situation. The fact that Skylar was working as a chef instead of practicing his martial arts. Or maybe it was the type of people as well. The word that Skylar from the Wu Club clan was working as a chef had gotten around to those who knew Skylar. Those who had lost fights to him in the past had come to see if this was true for themselves visiting the restaurant, and proceeded to mock him. Skylar didn't hold back and proved he was still a skillful warrior, dealing with all those that annoyed and mocked him. However, Zahn and Rain had rules if he was to fight so much in the restaurant, not to destroy the restaurant, and not to allow any other customers to be harmed. Right now, in their eyes, this was just another one of those moments. What are you doing? You guys have been bothering the customers all night, asking them strange questions, Skylar said. I let it go since you were buying a lot of stuff, but then you bring this strange object out. There's a whole line of customers waiting to get in. Just eat your food and leave. Skylar was in a bad mood. He was frustrated because Zahn had told him to correct his form multiple times when stretching out the dough. He thought he had been doing it perfectly, but Skylar was told again and again to use his chi for cooking of all things. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Pons said. We're paying customers. You can't just ask us to leave, and no one else seems to be bothered by this except you. Besides, don't you know who I am? I'm a Pogna warrior. You shouldn't lay your hands so lightly on a Pogna warrior. The words were irritating Skylar quite a bit, and the chefs behind started to laugh out loud because they had heard similar words before, and it was when Skylar and his group had first come to the restaurant as well. Pogna warriors mean nothing here. You mean nothing, so get out, Skylar said, tensing his hand around Pons's wrist. The humiliation had reached its peak for Pons. A dirty chef had used his hands on him, a carefully trained warrior, and there wasn't an ounce of respect. With his other hand, he went to strike at the chef. In that instant, Skylar let go of Pons's hand, then swirled, knocking the strike away in the air. Pons was slightly surprised by this, he was a middle-stage warrior and had used chi in his strike, yet it had been blocked. 
but with his frustration reaching a new high, he continued to throw fists. Again and again, Skylar blocked the punches from hitting his body, effortlessly knocking the hands away. The way he was moving, it was almost the same movements he made when pulling the dew. Uff. The onlookers, seeing this, almost felt like it was a performance, and some even started to clap and cheer. Right then, Skylar knocked the hands away, then swirled around the back, hitting pawns on the back of the head with a large amount of force. It knocked him out, sending his body to the floor, but Skylar caught the man by the back of his shirt before slowly letting him lie on the floor. Immediately, Kelp and the rest of the group got up to surround the chef. I guess I should have taken that other man's word seriously. You are a Pagna warrior and a pretty strong one. Maybe you're just the person we were looking for, Kelp said. Right, scum like you would of course gang up on a single person like me, Skylar said as he rolled his sleeves up to his elbows, ready for a fight. One of the warriors charged forward and gave a large kick to the center. Skylar lifted both of his forearms, blocking the attack. Right after, another strike came toward his head, but he was smoothly able to avoid the hit. Three warriors of great skill were attacking him at once, but Skylar was able to avoid them each time. I might be imagining things, but have I gotten better? But how? All I've been doing for almost two weeks now is making noodles, Skylar thought. With that thought in his head, there was one fist, incredibly fast compared to the others, aimed right at his face, thrown by kelp. The fist solidly hit his head, lifting Skylar off his feet and sending him back, crashing into one of the tables, breaking it apart. The customers nearby rushed to their feet and moved away, slightly startled by what had just happened. You should have known when to quit, kelp said. Skylar, rubbing his forehead that was slightly sore, could feel the presence of someone else standing by his side. It's the same for you, Skylar mumbled. Now Kelp and his group could see another man in chef's clothes standing right next to Skylar. You've broken the rule, Zahn said. You destroyed the restaurant's property. Chapter 828, Unstoppable Chef. The grin on Rain's face was the largest of all those in the resta, forearms rested on top of his belly as he looked ahead. I can't believe that Zahn is getting involved himself. Rain sighed level of skills he displayed that day. Shouldn't we still be worried, Rain? One of the cooks asked, warriors, and it looks like they were able to get the better of Ske. Although many felt that way, it was because they knew nothing world, and it was the same for Rain. He was just trusting his goo. Without realizing it, he had recruited a very, very special person. Paragraph comment. Paragraph comment feature now on the web. Move Mao over any paragraph and click the icon to add your comma. Also, you can always turn it off on in settings. Got it. You cooks have all gone mad to stand up and fight against us. I doubt any clan is going to stand up for harming a bunch of cooks, Kelp shouted. As he did, the others by his side all rushed in toward where Zahn was. Window.pubfuturetag equals window pub future tag. Window.pubfuturetag.push unit 64834B3273F92E2 ID PF4030-1. Your chi control has gotten a lot better, Zahn commented. Skylar realized that these comments were aimed at him. If you keep at it, your noodles will be close to perfection. It's a shame, unlike with your group. With these, I don't see anyone who is talented. The first man came to strike, and it missed, going right past Zahn's face. Just moments after the strike was thrown, a large cracking sound was heard. The arm that was used to strike the bone in the forearm had been snapped, broken apart. Right after, Zahn grabbed the man by the face and threw him to the side as another opponent came to strike. This time there were two striking at the same time. Stepping ahead, Zahn spun his body. Skylar, watching, was focused so focused that he was trying to see every detail. It felt like he was watching the movement in slow motion. How is it possible? How is he able to move the right way to avoid the two hits? One attacker was throwing a punch, the other a kick and Zahn had managed to move and bend his body in such a way that both attacks missed him. If Zahn hadn't stepped forward or tried to block or avoid the attack in any other way, it seemed like the attack would have struck his body. This type of calculation, this type of foresight, it was impossible for a human, at least one at the middle stage. Zahn, after avoiding their attacks and going past them, 
grabbed the back of their clothing and pulled their bodies, smashing them into each other. Right after their bodies collided, he threw them to the floor. Lifting up his foot, he then stomped down, crushing the bones in both of their legs. They wouldn't be getting up any time soon, even as Pagna warriors who could use chi to speed up their healing. Seeing how swiftly and easily Zahn had dealt with three warriors, there was now only kelp left. Skylar was right to intervene, Zahn said as he held the strange metallic object in his hand. This item would have done harm. I can tell from the look on your face. If he hadn't stepped in, then I would have myself. I was able to listen in on your conversation from the beginning, and it has been bugging me. Who sent you here? Zahn asked. Kelp had one hand reaching inside his shirt, pressing onto something multiple times. It was the only thing he could do in this situation. How the heck? Who is this person? How did he defeat multiple middle-stage warriors with ease? And he's just a chef, and I've never even seen this person. Something is going on in this dark faction. None of it is making sense. I'm not even sure if this person used any chi, Kelp thought. His mind was running wild, and although he had activated a particular device hidden within his shirt, it wouldn't help him in the situation he was in now. We'll pay for all the damage we did in the restaurant and more. I apologize. We'll leave right away, Kelp said. When he finished his sentence, Zahn had already gone right across the room and delivered a kick. A low, ud crack resounded through Kelp's body. He couldn't feel the pain, but the sound was echoing in his mind as he saw himself fall to the floor. As he did, he turned to look at what happened and saw his legs mangled. Zahn then went into Kelp's shirt and pulled out the strange device. It was like a rectangular disc with a button in the center. At the same time, there was another device, white in color, with a small marking of a golden eye. If you had said that from the beginning and didn't act strangely, I might have believed you, Zahn said as he held both items in his hand. What is this? What did you do? Zahn asked. In Zahn's world, there were many technological advancements. At first, he thought it might have been some type of makeshift bomb device to be used in an emergency situation, but it had done no such thing. On the flat circular device, he could tell that it was sending out some transmission, but there was no message. If he were to guess, it was a device to signal someone in case of an emergency. The question was, what would happen now? And that's what Zahn wanted to find out. Tell me, Zahn said again, looking down at Kelp. Just as he said those words, seemingly appearing out of nowhere into the room, was a student wearing a red headband. The red headband no longer signified those belonging to the academy, but instead, those part of the special assassination force being created by Kronker from the Crimson Crane. The person who had arrived was Tinson, one of the first three of Kronker's students. I'm here to deliver a message, Tinson said. We are to be on the lookout for anyone suspicious. If you find them, you are to keep an eye on them, but whatever you do, don't interact with or attack them. When Tinson lifted his head and looked at the chaos around, he realized that it might have been a little too late. Chapter 829, A Good Man Can Change At first, Rain was quite excited to see the magnificent Zahn in a particular fan of fighting. Every time Zahn did something, he were. And although he was amazed this time, he never expected Zahn the warriors were in. He felt like there was no choice but to quee. He wanted to stop rumors from spreading, and even though that could claim it was the fault of the others most of the time, this, that, paragraph comment, paragraph comment feature now on the web. Move Mao over any paragraph and click the icon to add your comma. Also, you can always turn it off on in settings. Got it. Especially since this group of warriors had been going around by on 101 everyone. They were all quickly cleared out of the restaurant, and Rain even told most of the workers to go home for the day. Window.pub future tag equals window tag, window pub future tag push unit 648C3C through 4, 3270FF9C22, ID PF-4. The only ones left in the restaurant were Kelp and his injured group, Zahn, Skyler, and Tinson, the person with the red headband that had appeared. Right now, Rain was clearing up the broken table and getting a mop ready to clean up some of the blood that had been spilled. I expected him to lash out, but he overpowered them with ease. He broke their bones, and none of them even stood a chance. 
Rain thought. Just what type of monster did I hire for this place? Skylar had similar thoughts, but they were in the opposite direction. This man, he must be some type of hidden master, a person who's lived a long life and decided to go into hiding by working at a noodle shop of all places. Skylar thought, as he searched one of the injured warriors, moving his clothing and digging deep into their pockets. When I fought earlier, my techniques were more refined. Making noodles, it must be some type of secret technique or something. Skylar thought, and eventually pulled out a small round device with a button and a golden eye. It wasn't just Skylar. Soon after, Tinson had also pulled out the same device from one of the others. Eventually, five of the same devices were placed on the table, each of them discovered on the other's bodies. Kelp had one as well, but he also had the flattened round item on him, which Zahn was still holding. So what exactly are all of these things? Skylar asked. I've never seen them before. Why would a bunch of warriors have them? Tinson, who had been ordered to deliver the message to Zahn, didn't know much himself, just to say what he had already said, but it looked like he was a step too late, so he wanted to get the full details before he would head back to inform Cronker, who would go on to tell the rest. I just hope this isn't as bad as I think it is. I don't want to see an angry raise again, Tinson thought back to when he was in the underground assessment and how he managed to survive without Ray's taking his head, like many others had been taken at the time. His life was turning around and looking up, and then this situation had to occur for him. These devices mean these people are all from Altar, Zahn answered. Only their members carry these. It allows them to confirm that there are others just like them. Altar? That group of weirdo shaman-type people? Skylar commented. It was Tinson who was surprised. Being closer to Kronker, he and the rest of the Crimson Crane had learned more about the world of Pagna. The real group of Altar and Otherworlders, the Bonum Society, and more. It seems like whoever ordered you to deliver this message knew these people were coming, Zahn said. But I don't know why they wouldn't want me to deal with them and leave them alone instead. Skylar wasn't really following, but just nodded and decided to keep helping Rain, though he continued to watch what Zahn was doing the man who had become his biggest admiration. Zahn flipped the flat device in his hand, while in the other, he held the long metallic stick. He then went over to Kelp, who was tied up in a chair. His legs were bandaged, though it wouldn't do much. I'm going to ask you what does this device do? Zahn asked. Why did you press it when you felt like you were in danger? Kelp looked at Zahn with weak eyes and glanced at the rest of his people. Are you going to kill me if I don't tell the truth? Do you think a Pagna warrior is afraid of death? Kelp replied. Have you even killed anyone before? You shouldn't say words so lightly. Zahn placed both of his hands on Kelp's shoulders and pushed into them deeply, digging his fingers inside. I consider myself a good person, always doing things for the sake of an entire country so people can live better lives, Zahn said. The thing is, doing such a thing there were my fair share of people I needed to get rid of. As you might expect from a good person, taking a life isn't easy. After doing so, there are endless sleepless nights, images appearing in your mind, and voices in your head. But I'm going to tell you something that only a person like me would know. It gets easier, and it doesn't matter who the person is. In the end, everything becomes a blur. They just become a bunch of numbers, tasks that you need to do, it doesn't matter about the age or the type of person in front of you. Because all of those feelings of guilt that you had the first time, they get shoved deeper and deeper. Getting rid of you wouldn't weigh on my conscience at all, and besides, Zahn then pulled out the special metallic pen-like object. I heard what you said before with this device, I can find out the truth, right? Wait, Kelp shouted before Zahn even tried to use the device. They gave it to me. They said if the mission was to fail or I felt like I was in danger, I was to push the button. In doing so, it would send a message out, the place is deemed too dangerous for other squads to enter. And what does that mean, Zahn said, getting his face closer to Kelp. Kelp then gulped down his saliva. When no squads can complete a mission, it means that Alter has no choice. They will send a deleter here. Chapter 830. Alter's Aim. Thanks to Kronker. 
the message was delivered to all of those that were there supporting Reyes and his group, including members of the Bonham Society. They were to look for anyone acting strange or investigating strange areas. They were then to report back while keeping an eye on those individuals as well. After the message was sent out, Reyes decided to return to where Himmy was, and he had done so along with Anna. Since the two of them were part of the original squad along with Himmy, he thought it was best for them both to come. On top of that, he knew that Anna also had the skill to detect if a person was lying. There was one thing that Reyes was sure of, having spent quite a bit of time with Anna. She had next to no care about Alter at all. She was only here to stay close to Zahn, who was sticking with Reyes and his group for the time being. She had found the person she was looking for, the person she served, so she had long ago cut her ties with Alter. Window.FutureTag equals window.pubfuturetag, window.pubfuturetag.push, unit 64A3C64B3703F9C2E2, ID PF463-1. This is a reunion that I didn't expect, Himmy said as he sat up on the bed he was lying on. You can continue lying down, although I'm pretty sure you're all nicely healed up, Ray's commented. It's okay. I think the matters we will be talking about deserve to happen face to face, Himmy said as he got off the bedside and headed to a table in the room. Shortly after, both Anna and Ray's sat down as well. I told you a lot about Alter already, so I think in the world of fairness, I'd like to know more about you, Ray's. Himmy said. I want to know, what is it, or why is it, that Alter seems to be after you? I've met a lot of mages during my time, a lot of otherworlders, but this is the first time there's been such a drastic reaction. I've told the others a bit, but I guess I should explain from a point of view that maybe a detective would understand. I'm sure you have wanted criminals in your world. I heard that the one in charge of Alter is a mage, so he's most likely from Alterian as well. The name I use, the Dark Magus, is the most wanted person in Alterian. Himmy, hearing the news, had some reaction as his eyes widened and he leaned back in his seat, but it was clear what Reyes was saying, that he was this person in question. Of course, Anna, who was by Reyes's side, could tell everything he was saying was true as well. You don't seem too surprised? Reyes asked. What, you wanted a different reaction? Himmy said, raising an eyebrow. You want me to pull out some handcuffs and take you to Alter, the people who just tried to kill me? Trust me, during my time as a detective, I had some pretty wild cases. Even the force itself was often corrupt. Just to finish cases, or to pass numbers to the higher-ups, they would pin it on the most obvious person, rather than the real culprit. Maybe kids see things as black and white, but the world really isn't like that. Things can be seen as simple. No matter what, killing is bad. Even if the person has done a terrible thing, taking a life is bad, and there are those goody two-shoes that could never ever take a life, no matter what circumstances they were in. They see even a life for a life is wrong and believe there are other ways, but sometimes there just isn't another way. The need to kill one person to save many has come up in history throughout the world many times. Himmy then went on to do his normal gesture, pulling his fingers close to his lips and letting out a big huff of air. So, you're a badass mage that went against the system. I can see why they're scared of you, so are you going after them, going after Alter? Himmy asked. Ray's nodded in response. Alter isn't the one going after me, but now that I'm sure there's a link between them and the Grand Magus, I will be going after them as well. No wonder they want to get to you first. I mean, you already took over the Dark Faction, something Alter has failed to do for a long time, Himmy said. I'm no fool. I need to look into who my employers are, and I could see the goals of those programmers from a mile away. I'll give you the details you want. I'll tell you where Alter's base is, what items they have, their numbers, their power, and everything. But I don't know what they're really after in the end. What I do know is that with Alter and the movement of the squads, for a long time, they've been trying to spread their power so they could control one of the three factions. They were unable to infiltrate the demonic faction. It was a lost cause from the beginning. They seem to have some type of instinct to those that aren't one of their own. Although they have some power in the dark faction, they were unable to progress extremely far. Rays could guess why. 
Bofan was here originally, perhaps slowing them down, and the Bonham Society base was in the Dark Faction as well. Lastly, there was Merkel and the fact that he was a red hybrid. From the outside, maybe the Dark Faction looked like the easiest to control, but it was quite difficult. Reyes was only able to do so by working together with others and using a bit of help to get rid of Merkel. If he hadn't had the chalice back then, even Reyes would have failed in taking over the Dark Faction. Right now, the faction that Alter has the most control over is the Light Faction. Fighting against Alter means you will be going up against them as well. And just with the Dark Faction, I don't think it will be enough. Chapter 831 The Real Raises Body The fact that the Light Faction and Alter were closely linked didn't come as a huge surprise to Raze. One of his first instances of running into a mage figure was fighting against one of the elders of the Dawnblade clan. The fact that he could use magic and seemed to somewhat know the name of the Dark Magus always made Reyes believe there were a few links. You know, the Dark Faction and Demonic Faction, the clans don't know the real power of Alter. Even those that work for Alter, like me, have friends they've made in Pagna and different areas they call home. Because of how Alter was built up, it's hard for them to act on their own. So what do they need to do? They need to use someone else to do their bidding and support them as much as they can. If they can't do it with the Dark Faction, they'll do it with the Light Faction. Raze could already see it. Alter had gathered artifacts from all different dimensions and all over Pagna, with the goal of making the world a safer place. Now they had such power if they gave it all to the Light Faction, they would quickly become a powerful force. Window.pub future tag equals window.pub future tag. Window.pub future tag dot push unit 648C3CU4B32TPF463-1. However, if they did so, stating they were just trying to help the light faction, it would have been a lot harder for them to do or get people from Alter to help them. Alter already has a large number of their people in high positions, even some as clan heads in the Light Faction, so it's not hard for them to do, Himmy continued. Of course, Alter didn't tell me this stuff. I ran my own investigation from time to time, rather than just blindly following their programmers like the others. You mentioned these programmers before, Reyes said. And this deleter, what are they? What is the system of Alter in the first place? Himmy went on to tell Reyes the layout of the Alter base, where it was located, its secret location, and how everything worked in the place. The deleters, along with the items in the Light Faction, are all a dangerous combination to deal with, Himmy continued. If I were you, I would choose to target one of them. Maybe the Light Faction is your best bet, but since you are one of these factions, remember you'll always have other things to worry about. Unrest from within your own faction, unity among your people, and the demonic faction as well. I wouldn't exactly love to be in your position. It was the golden information Reyes needed, though. Knowing where the base was and what items he could use for himself gave him more options than before for what he could possibly do. The issue was if Alter had found some way to bring people over. At the moment, did Reyes have the strength to go up against the Grand Magus? He was close, but he was unsure, and it would depend on whether they were on their own or not. I am curious about something, another question of mine, Himmy said. I've watched you for a while. Are you able to use chi and mana at the same time? I am, Reyes answered, wondering why Himmy was asking the question, and remembered what had happened to Safa when she had learned magic. Is it a problem with Pagna warriors? Reyes asked. Himmy nodded. It is, but I might have to reevaluate the information I know. As far as we are aware, Pagna warriors are unable to learn magic. If one has a chi core, then when trying to create a mana heart, the chi will act to protect it and destroy the mana core around the heart, killing the person on the spot. If a person learns magic first, although they have a dantian, they can't use chi, but they can fill up the dantian with mana, allowing them to use pagna martial arts. In a lot of cases, mages that learn pagna martial arts are even stronger because they almost have an unlimited amount of chi. Reyes remembered back to the fight with the Elder and how tough it was. He had yet to meet another individual like that. But because of this, 
Pagna arts and magic can't be used at the Fey, same time. So Pagna warriors can't learn magic, but mages can learn arts, but can't use them at the same time. Yet you were capable of both at the same time. Just how is it possible? Ray's thought about an answer for a while. This was information he was missing himself. Now he understood what had happened to Safa. The only reason she had survived was because she had used light magic. But what about himself? In this situation, it should have been the same for Ray's. And then he figured out the answer. I had no chi, Ray's answered. And this body is not one from Alterian, but one from Pagna. Now Himi was even more confused than before. What do you mean? I mean what I said, Ray's answered. This is something I haven't told the others, but you have answered me truthfully and given me a lot of information. I used a special artifact back in Alterian. I'm not an otherworlder like all of you. Instead, the artifact forced me into this body, which is from Alterian. I see, Himi said. So you entered a body that had no Dantian or Chi. With your knowledge from being a mage, you made a mana heart and later created your Chi core. That's how you were able to do both. It seems you are quite lucky in that aspect. What do you mean? Reyes asked. Having a body that has no such Dantian or Chi core. Even though there are those that aren't warriors, every person originally from Pagna still has some Chi in their body. Otherwise, Alter would have just grabbed infants from Pagna and raised them, learning magic and Pagna skills to create monsters like you. Somehow, your body had no Dantian, most that are like that end up dying at a young age, or there's another possibility, it was forcibly removed or broken from your body. Ray started to think back to how weak the body was that he was in, how hard it was for him to even create a core, and when reaching the first stage, the amount of blood that came out of him. It was then that Himmy pulled out a small-looking stick device. I don't have anything you can use this in right now, but you might come across one someday. This here is all of the information I have on the investigation I was running. Do you remember how we met? I was looking into all of the deaths that occurred. If you find out what's on it, it might make more sense to you. Maybe you'll find out if the real body that you're in was related to those events. My gut is telling me your original body's owner has something to do with it, and maybe why there were those after your life. Chapter 832, Double Trouble Rays, took the small device. It looked like something from Alterian, so he was quite familiar with it. It was something that needed to be inputted into a technological device beyond the means of what they had in Pagna. If he went to the altar base, they might have something he could use or maybe a mirror would have something that could help as well. The thing was, as Reyes held it in his hand, he thought back to when he first arrived in Pagna. He had almost forgotten how he joined Alter in the first place, or the reason for him being in such a place. Right, the random deaths that were occurring, that was what brought me to the Lethal Bite Clan. In the end, that matter seemed to be something else, but there were a lot of similarities. It was how I met Anna as well. But I almost forgot that there were those after my life, and Safa's as well, and I never figured out the reason behind it. Reyes was sitting there, looking at the device in his hand. Himmy hadn't found anything, but maybe if he had a look at what was on it himself, he would find something. After all, there were times, like with the messages left behind by the old Dark Faction founder, that Reyes understood when others hadn't. When finding out about the groups, I originally thought the Bonham Society was behind it, but it seems they are unrelated to the matter, and Amir didn't know me or Safa. Window pub future tag equals window dot pub future tag no pub future tag dot push unit 648C 3C56 or 3 3273F9C2E2 PF463-1. There's a chance it could be alter. They're a large enough organization to have those doing things that not even the higher-ups know, but it would make no sense to put Himmy on the case then. There was a chance the information Himmy found could unlock what the bloody woman was that traveled with him, or how she came to be attached to the body and just what the original Raze's body was trying to do. Thank you for all of this. I'm guessing this means you will no longer be part of Alter? Raze asked. After they locked me up and tried to kill me, of course not, Himmy said. Only a fool would go back to them. I've traveled around the continent long enough, and I know how to keep my head down. 
You can stay here if you want, Reyes said. I can't offer ultimate protection over you all the time, and I don't know who is part of Alter and who is not, but it should be quite a safe place. Himmy was thinking about it for a while, twiddling his fingers, and ready to give an answer until the door burst open and a female with a red headband entered. I'm sorry to disturb you, Reyes, Violet said. Another one of the ex-students that were now part of Kronker and his special assassination group. I have received word that a group from Alter was discovered in the outer area of the academy near the Perfect Noodle Shop, Violet informed. Perfect Noodle Shop, Reyes repeated, trying to think if he had even seen such a place. Wait, they're here already? Himmy said, surprised. That was faster than I expected, but maybe we can buy some time, try to delay them, give them some false information, and lead them elsewhere. Violet started to rapidly blink as she hadn't quite finished her report. Unfortunately, that won't be possible, Violet said. You see, there has been a confrontation in the noodle shop involving the group from Alter. They were able to confirm they were from Alter due to the devices they held. Violet then reached into her inner pocket and pulled out the strange flattened device. Immediately upon seeing this, Himmy stood up from his seat. That's an emergency signaler, and it's already been activated. Violet didn't say more, as it seemed Himmy already knew the dire situation they were in. What does that mean? Reyes asked. This is what I was worried about, Himmy said. It was best not to engage with the altar team and try to find a way to delay them while figuring out another plan of attack. That has sent a signal, stating that there is nothing the altar squads sent here can do. They are, we been found out, and the mission is compromised, leaving altar with no choice but to send a deleter here. I don't know how long you have, but soon they'll be here, and they will do as their name states, they will delete the entire academy from existence as if it was never here in the first place. Although Himmy was startled, Reyes was not. Even after hearing how devastating these deleters could be for a while now, their strength it sounded like the Divine Warriors or like how the Grand Magus were described in Alterian. Rather than wiping out clans, though, the Grand Magus were said to have the power to eliminate entire countries. If you want my advice, it's to take everyone you care about and get away from here, Himmy said. It's too much of a risk at this growing stage. It's okay, Reyes said, standing up. You said before that it was impossible to take on Alter, these deleters, and the Light faction at the same time, so this is a perfect situation for us. This is a chance for us to take on one of these deleters completely on our own. In my eyes, if Alter is foolish enough to send just one person to take us out, then they're making a big mistake. Let's take this chance and turn it into an opportunity. Himmy knew he could no longer say more, and who knew, maybe Reyes could pull it off with the rest of his powerful group. That was when, right by Violet's side, another student named Joe appeared, sweat running through his entire body. I have an urgent message that has been delivered by Reyna concerning the demonic faction, Joe shouted. It seems the Behemoth clan has decided to attack the town of Flendon, Chapter 833, A Man's Promise A meeting was taking place between those now in charge of the Dark Faction, and the person who had called it was one of the most unlikely individuals. It was Reyna Narfus, from the Neverfall clan, and also the Dark Magus's current wife. Although the marriage was just to ensure Belil was off Reyes' back in a number of ways, it certainly had its fair share of advantages one of them being the gift of a town for them to look after in the demonic faction, a place called Flendon Town. It was known throughout the entire demonic faction to belong to both Reyna and Reyes, and the last time it was attacked, it had been protected by them along with the Crimson Crane. Now, a meeting had been called as the town was once again under attack. Inside the academy, a room set up for the leaders was being used. There were grand chairs set opposite each other in the room with a single chair at the head of the area like a table. Since no one really cared for formalities and didn't even have official positions, they all just sat where they liked, while Reyna sat at the head of the table. Window.pubfuturetag equals window.pubfuturetag, window.pubfuturetag.push, unit 648CC564B3270F9C2, ID, PF-463U-1. Shouldn't that be where Reyes sits? 
Liam whispered as he took his seat. I don't really think he cares about that stuff, Simeon replied. Let's just get on with whatever is going on. I called you all because I just got word that the Behemoth clan is making moves and they're sending a large force to Flendon Town, Reyna explained. The Behemoth clan, again, Alba said. Did they not learn their lesson from last time? Apparently not. Shamo has been angry about the whole situation in the demonic faction for some time. He has a hatred for the Dark Magus for multiple reasons. My guess is the only reason he hasn't attacked is the worry of retaliation from the Neverfall clan. However, my father has never stated that he would get involved if a place was attacked. On top of that, we aren't currently there. On top of that, this time it seems Shamo is making a move himself. After already dealing with a powerful foe in Merkel and those close to him, facing another from the demonic faction made the others uncertain. It was always hard to tell the main clan's true strength, and the demonic clans even harder, but it was assumed they were stronger than the other clans. They just lacked men due to how crazy the demonic clans seemed compared to other clans. That was apart from the Behemoth clan, which was the largest clan in the demonic faction. And what does that have to do with us? Anna asked. Right now, Raze is the leader of the Dark Faction. If Shamo has a problem with Raze, then he can go against the Dark Faction. Although Flendon isn't in the Dark Faction, it is owned by the Dark Magus, Reno said, speaking up. It's quite clear the only reason they're attacking is because it belongs to the Dark Magus and they're trying to get a reaction out of Raze. Not only that, what about all the people? Froma said. Even if Raze isn't there, those people took part in the fight against the Behemoth clan last time. I'm sure Shamo isn't going to go easy on any of them. They will lose their lives because of what we did. We have to help them. Raze was listening to everyone's opinions, but it wasn't just Anna. Even Amir spoke up, thinking it was best for Raze to just stay in the dark faction rather than face another large enemy so soon. But Flendon was a gift from my father. If we lose it, we could be in his bad books as well. Reyna pleaded. While the others were arguing, Raze still didn't say anything, and that was when the outsider decided to speak up as well. This isn't as easy as you all think, Himmy said. There's another issue, which has come at the worst possible time. All heads turned to Himmy, the person who had come in injured. He had been standing by Raze's side the whole time, so no one had asked why he was involved in the meeting. A group from Altar arrived not to you, oo long ago. They've sent a message, and at any point in time, a powerful enemy from Altar could be sent here. The Behemoth clan is no small clan, but leave here, and there's a chance you lose everything here as well. This was the true predicament Raze was in, not whether to go or not, but where to go in this situation. So what are we going to do, Raze? Speak up, man. Say something, brother. Liam started shouting. Shut up, Safa said. Just because it takes you two seconds to make an irrational decision doesn't mean everyone else should. Taking time to think things over is what a sensible person would do. While everyone was arguing, Himmy walked over to Anna and asked for something. After taking it from her, he wandered over to Ray's. Do you remember what I gave you when you became an official member? Himmy asked. Seeing what was in Himmy's hand, Ray's pulled out the same device. It was the small round white object that proved one was a member of Altar. If you hand it to me, I can buy some time. You see, these things are also used as tracking devices, Himmy explained. Wait, and you're only telling him now? Safa said. I assumed you wanted to keep it to give you a better idea of who to trust, but the situation has changed now, Himmy said. I will take all of these and move away. They will think we are on the move together and go after me first. Will you be okay? Ray's asked. I got away from the entire group of Alter. Avoiding one person shouldn't be too difficult, Himmy answered. And why would you do this, for me, for us? Ray's asked, still suspicious. He had many people offer a helping hand in the past, only for it to turn out to be false and for their own gain. I do have one favor to ask, Himmy said. If you find Charlotte, do what you can to protect her. She is a good person, too good for this world, and she seems to have taken a liking to you. Himmy then snatched the device out of Raze's hand and immediately headed toward the door. It's a promise between men. I know you'll keep it. Chapter 834 
Town of Flendon The Town of Flendon, located in the Demonic Faction, had received quite the boom after defeating the Behemoth Clan in a small scuffle. After the fight, the town received a large number of gifts, supporting the place, thinking it would become another big player in the Demonic Faction. With it, an influx of citizens had come to join the place as well, and Mayor Jarlston used the influx of funds to hire more mercenary wanderers to help protect the city from smaller clans that might target such a place. Although the Crimson Crane's base was meant to be located at Flendon, due to the small size and the way Alba ran her clan, they didn't hire new recruits. This meant there wasn't necessarily a clan to protect the place like other areas. There was one person in particular who had joined the clan for a while now and was standing guard on one of the major outside walls. With his black hair and dark eyes, he was observing the situation. Please just let me leave, a woman screamed in front of the gate. We already talked about this and sorted everything out. Window.pubfuturetag equals window pub future tag. Window.pubfuturetag.push unit 648C3664. 322703F9C2, Alums 1. A man was grabbing a woman by the wrist, trying to drag her back. I already told you it was an accident, and it wouldn't have happened if you were at home all the time, the man replied. An accident? So your little wee wee just slipped in by accident? The woman screamed again. And I worked because you were fired. We needed the money. The woman jerked her arm pulling it out from the man's grasp, and continued moving toward the city. She grabbed a piece of rope that was tugging along all her belongings piled in boxes. She only managed to move a couple of steps before the man grabbed the back of her head. You're not going anywhere, the man declared as he pulled her to the ground. I don't care what a piece of paper says. You're mine. You promised to stay with me, you filthy damned botch! The man continued to pull the woman by the back of her head. Hey! A voice shouted out. The man turned around and saw a fist coming right toward him. It hit him square in the face, and he felt his two front teeth bend in and snap out of his mouth as his whole body was flung backward. Brack, what are you doing? One of the other guards shouted, running over. This is a civil matter. We're not supposed to get involved with these things. And besides, she's not even a citizen of Flendon. We don't get paid for this. What, and you expect me to just let that ahole do as he wishes? Brack said, wiping his fist as if disgusted to even have the man's blood on it. Besides, she was coming here to become a resident, right? The woman quickly nodded as she bowed, saying thank you. Meanwhile, Brack went ahead and grabbed the piece of rope. Just see it as helping our future citizens, Brack said as he flung the rope aiming to slide the large crates of boxes on the sled beyond the gate. Instead, the sled with all the boxes slid and then crashed on the ground, breaking right in front of the gate. Brack froze as he looked at all the items, an awkward smile on his face. I'll get them all packed for you, Brack said as he rushed to put everything back in its place. While packing for the woman, the other guards just continued to shake their heads at Brack. Most of the new hires had gate duty rather than city duty like those originally from Flendon. It was just an easy job for them to earn some coin, so they didn't get too involved. But Brack was different, constantly getting involved, and this wasn't the first time he had done something like this. The thing was, for those who knew him, they would have known that this was completely strange for his character, or how he used to be. What am I even still doing here? Raise? the Dark Magus, the Crimson Crane, none of them are even here. Was he even serious when he said he would let me join him? Brack was one of the students who took part in the martial arts tournament and was also part of the Behemoth Clan. Due to his disappointing performance, Shamo had decided to abandon him, stating that he wasn't fit to be part of the clan. At the time, Reyes was the one who decided to look after him and allowed him to join the clan. The issue was, Rays had teleported everyone away, including Brack. There was nowhere for Brack to return to. He couldn't go back to the Behemoth clan, so he had no choice but to go to the town of Flendon, where Rays, the Dark Magus, was supposed to be. He had been here for over a month now, and there was no sign of him returning at all. Yet, Brack stayed with no other choice. Needing to make some coin somehow, and being a Pagna warrior, he decided to be a guard for the city. 
After putting all the woman's stuff away, he offered to help her push it again, but she kindly declined with a sweet smile. Brack didn't insist, knowing that he might use a little too much of his strength again and just make it even harder for the poor woman. Brack, you need to take this job a little more casually, you know, the guard said. Just let people be, you're not a hero that can go stopping all the disputes in the world. And you're young, you should leave that stuff to the adults. Adults? Brack said. But the Dark Magus is young as well, and look how much he's done. He's one of a kind, one of a kind. Don't try following in his footsteps. Just relax and accept the coin. Just as the man said that, a horse was seen steaming through the fields, running their way. There was a man on top. Halt! The guard shouted. Wait, that's one of our own horses. Don't you recognize the banner on the horse? The horse continued to run forward, and as it got closer, they could see there certainly was a man on the horse, but it was just his body as he was dead. Several swords had pierced inside of him, and he had been sent on his way toward the town. I know this, Brack said. This is the Behemoth Clan. Chapter 835 Walking Into It Just like that, as quickly as Himmy had come to visit the academy, he had left. There was part of Ray's that wanted to stop him, tell him that there was no need for him to go, but Himmy was an adult capable of making his own decisions. It was clear he had already made up his mind. Everything that Himmy could have done and told Ray's, the information was already in his hands. I guess that's that issue solved, but what about the town of Flendon? What are we going to do? Liam asked. It was then that Anna stood up from her seat and decided to rush out of the room, heading toward the door. For now, everyone just stay on standby, but get ready and prepare for a fight if there needs to be one. We'll use Cronker to deliver messages, Ray's ordered, and the rest nodded as they went off to do their own thing again. For Ray's, he waited for everyone to leave the room and then looked at Reyna, who was the only person still inside. She had been biting her thumbnail and pacing back and forth. Eventually, Ray's walked up to her, and she seemed to not even notice he was there as she continued to walk back and forth. Window pub future tag, it's window pub future tag. Window pub future tag dot push. Unit 648C3564B32703F9C2, ID PF-463-1. Until Ray's took a deep breath and made the decision to reach out and grab her hand, stopping her in the process. Ray's, you're still here? Raina said. I am indeed still here, and so are you, Ray's replied. You seem to have a lot on your mind. I can only guess it's the attack on Flendon. I feel bad, Raina said, all of those people getting involved because of me. Most of them that helped out weren't even Pagna warriors. Some might think I'm worried about what my father will think, but it's not that. Those people, they were nice to us, Ray's. Even when they found out we were taking them over, they didn't treat us any differently and many of them didn't even know who I was. Although Reyna was well known in the world of Pagna warriors, regular citizens wouldn't know what she looked like, and despite it all, they had been very welcoming. Reyes had to admit that as well, which was something he wasn't used to either. The worst thing about it is I can't do anything on my own. I can't fight the Behemoth clan. Even when we went up against one of their pillars, I barely managed to survive, but going up against Shamo himself, I have to admit, I'm scared. Do you not get scared, Rays? Rays thought about his own mix of emotions, and he had an answer for Reyna. Of course I get scared. I'm worried each time I fight, each time there's a chance that those fighting by my side could be lost. I let all of these emotions in every second, each day, and that's how I'm able to fight. Reyna, you've helped me out a lot and I'll help protect Flendon with everything I have. In return, can you get me a meeting with your father after this? Ray's asked. Ray's was sure of it, that the answer to where the Golden Globe was, what happened to the Dark Faction leader, was at the Neverfall clan base, and maybe Belil knew something. If we successfully defend Flendon, and even defeat Shamo, then I'm sure of it. Our father will be the one that wants to meet us. Himmy was walking at a relatively quick pace and was already out of the academy's main walls and into the outer area. He had a big grin on his face as he continued to walk. Those guys might actually give Alter a run for their money, Himmy thought. The wound I received, I thought I was a goner for sure. 
I felt three bullets hit and tear my insides. Any longer, and I would have died. But that girl, I don't think I've seen healing abilities quite like that before. Even among the mages, she was able to save my life that Alter took. None of them realize it, but I'm already in debt to them for saving my life, so if I can at least do something to give the middle finger to Alter, I may as well. Himmy could see the bridge that marked the official exit from the academy area up ahead, when of all people, Anna appear, Ed directly in front of him. What do you think you're doing, doing something so stupid like that? Anna said, pointing at his chest. What do you mean, something stupid? Himmy replied. You know I was telling the truth. With this, they'll come after me, and it will buy all of you some time. Anna was digging her finger deep into Himmy's chest, and it was hurting him a bit. You know what's going to happen. You know, Anna said, her eyes starting to water. I'm a squad leader, and I have been for a long time, looking after all of you. I got us out of trouble a number of times, and look at me, I'm right here in front of you, and I'll be right here in front of you again. With those words, Himmy grabbed Anna's hand and placed it down by her side. He continued to walk past while Anna stood there in place, her head down. A few hours later, Himmy was in another town in the Dark Faction. It was a town situated in part of a mountain with a river flowing down the end. He had rented a room with a balcony that allowed for a nice view of the river and the rest of the landscape. He looked out, then let out a big sigh. They sent you, Scar, Himmy said. They did, a voice said from behind. I knew this was a trick, and if anyone was behind it, it would be you. Maybe you should have stuck with your squad, not that it would make a difference anyway. Did you think because we're both from the same world, I might let you off or something? Scar said. Nah, the moment you became a deleter, I knew you were a lost cause. Anyway, I would be careful, Scar. This is going to be your hardest job yet. Thanks for the warning, but I won't need it. Chapter 836 An Entire Army Having been in the Behemoth Clan himself, Brack knew the methods of the clan. He had gone on quite a few expeditions with the teams, and this would often be their tactic when fighting against other clans or in a scuffle. They would send one of the opponents dead back to them. Usually, to strike even more fear, it would be someone of high caliber or importance. In this case, Brack just knew it was one of the Wanderer guards stationed farther out. Placed in the towers up ahead, which were built after they experienced the first attack, Brack feared the Behemoth clan was already incredibly close. Head to Jarlston. Tell him the Behemoth clan is coming, quick, Brack said, grabbing his fellow guard's shirt. Wait, how do you know it was the Behemoth clan's doing? It could have been anyone, or even bandits, who knows, the guard replied. If it isn't them, then I'll take responsibility. Just report to him now, Brack said. The guard, more scared of Brack than what was coming, quickly rushed off to inform the mayor, while Brack quickly started to jump up the side of the wall. He hung with his arms, then pulled himself up, landing on top of the wall. The others who were already there were startled, but once they saw who it was, they calmed down. Window.pub future tag equals window.pub future tag. Window.pub future tag push unit 648C3C56043270 3F9C2E2. ID dash 1. The man on horseback had been brought in, but the people were still far too calm about all of this. Looking into the distance, Brack continued to stare out, and that's when he could see it. Just over a sanded hill, rows of people walking over. The sand was kicking up, with some on horseback. While others were walking, among the thousands of people, there was a large, round giant figure that was giving off an extreme presence. The man next to Brack pulled out a telescope to look in the distance. His bottom lip quivered as he managed to catch a glimpse of who was there. As he continued to look, the glass at the end of the telescope shattered, startling the man, causing him to drop it onto the ground. What was that? How did the telescope break? One of the other guards asked. The man, still startled by what he saw, could only think of one person. He didn't understand it himself, but he gave an answer. The Behemoth clan, they're here, and not just them. Shamo has arrived. Shamo himself has arrived, the man shouted. Like a field of ants coming toward them, the guards soon realized the reality in front of them. The last time, thousands had been sent to attack the city, and now even more than before. 
there had to be at least 20,000 people coming at them. They certainly kept their reputation as one of the biggest clans out there, and Sha Mo, walking with two more pillars of his behemoth clan, was coming right at them. The bells were ringing throughout the city, and panic was setting in as everyone heard the news. Wealthy individuals, merchants, and those with little attachment to the town were packing their things. Many didn't even bother packing and did whatever they could to get out. There was a mass exodus of people, and it wasn't just the citizens either. Jarlston, who had received the news, was in the town hall. He had a map of the city in front of him, with several blocks representing the forces all heading toward the town of Flendon. Sir, we've reported the news through the channel that Reyna has given us. But we're unsure what's going to happen, one of the aides by Jarlston's side informed. We've been living quite good lives, thanks to them. No one has died from hunger since they came to look after us. If anything, we've been living luxuriously. I guess this is our fault for taking advantage of the situation, Jarlston said. Stop that, Andy replied. How can you blame us for just wanting to live our lives a bit? That's not our fault. It's the fault of these damned clans that think just because they have powerful warriors, they can do whatever they want. If the Crimson Crane and the Dark Magger, us, aren't here, then they shouldn't be attacking this place anyway. Jarlston nodded, but knew that none of the kingdoms in the Demonic Empire would do anything if they were to disappear. Partly because they only cared about the town because of the Dark Magus, who wasn't even there. I have more news to report, the aide said. It seems many of the wanderers and mercenaries we hired have fled as well. Damn crooks, Andy shouted, a young man wearing armor over his body and a shield on his back. It was one of the shields crafted by the Dark Magus. They take our money, saying they'll protect the place, but when the time comes for them to do anything, they just flee. Jarlston was looking at the map. From all the reports, the only people who stayed were the ones unable to leave, the large group of youngsters that had defended the town from the last attack from the Behemoth clan, the citizens who had lived here all their lives, and a few who had no means of leaving the place. The issue was, even the people left behind numbered less than the force that was coming to attack them. Maybe we can try to talk to them, Jarlston said. If we tell them the Crimson Crane and the Dark Magus isn't here, they will have no reason to attack. Talk? I don't think they brought every member of the Behemoth clan just to talk. According to the front gate, they already killed one of us and sent him to the front. Andy said, The whole world knows where the Dark Magus currently is. With the stories of Shamo, we all know how this will end. Jarlston was conflicted about what to do, and that's when the door burst open, and they could see a young man with messy black hair enter. I have a plan, Brack said, huffing and panting. But all my plan can do is delay them. I don't know the Dark Magus that well, which is why I'm asking you guys. How likely do you think the Dark Magus will turn up and help us? Brack had come here, wishing to meet the Dark Magus, but it had never matured into anything. He had only had brief interactions with the person during the martial arts tournament. Not just that, he had to think about how any sane person would react in this situation. With the Dark Magus running the Dark Faction, what reason would he have to come to a small town and fight Shamo? No one in their right mind would. But he decided to speak to the people who had decided to stay. They had to have stayed for a reason. It was then that Andy decided to answer that question, thinking back to the first time when the town of Flendon's walls were defended. He remembered fighting side by side with the Crimson Crane and what the Dark Magus had crafted for them all. He banged his shield and gave an answer to the young warrior. I'm sure. They will come. Chapter 837 The Dark Magus Will Come A plan to defeat the Behemoth Clan would seem impossible. Unless they could round up every single one of the demonic clans, which was an impossible task in itself due to how the demonic clans operated. Not even payment could sway the demonic clans to their side, or unless they had support from one of the larger clans like the Neverfall clan, but even that didn't seem to be possible in the situation they were in. There was no reason for two of the large clans to take a big hit fighting against each other, and not for a small place like the town of Flendon. 
While the Dark Magus wasn't in trouble or Reyna, no one expected the Neverfall clan to make a move, which meant everyone who had already learned of the attack on Flendon felt like it could only go one way, and this was the same for Brack as well. The mayor had left his town hall and gathered at the northern gate, where the large army of the Behemoth clan could be seen. There was no point staying in the hall making battle plans. The Behemoth clan wasn't one for tactics, attacking from different sides. Due to their large force and strength and how small Flendon was, they were just attacking from the front. I can't believe it, Andy said, standing on the wall, seeing the large force moving toward them. He estimated that it would take around 15 more minutes until they all arrived at the front gate. Did they not learn their lesson last time? We aren't so easy to take over. Window.pubfuture tag. Window.pubfuture tag. Window.pubfuture.push. 648C364B32703F9CE2. ADPF463-1. Andy bashed his shield with an almighty roar. He expected a few others to do the same, but when he turned around to look at the army, Jarlston managed to rally up. They all looked heavily nervous. In total, they managed to get 2,000 people. Most who had survived the battle from the time before, and those brave enough to fight for the city again. A thousand stood on top of the wall, while the other thousand stood below, the gates currently open, allowing them to see the army coming toward them. Last time, we had the Crimson Crane with us, another said, and the Dark Magus, it was them that managed to take out two of the pillars. Now we have to deal with two more pillars and Shamo himself. How is that possible? Even though most by the wall had managed to build up their resolve to protect the city, they were quickly losing it, especially in the face of the large enemy coming toward them. 20,000 strong Pagna warriors against 2,000 mostly ordinary people who had trained somewhat and could be called Pagna warriors. But it wasn't their day to day, nor did they have a clan to train them. Among them all, on the wall, there was a man who had most of his face wrapped up. A man no one would have guessed was there. I thought an interesting result might come from this. I could tell from my clan's information gathering that the Behemoth clan was making a move, so I went to the town of Flendon ahead of time. I thought the Dark Magus might have already made some moves or had something in place in case this happened, Linz thought, leader of the Lost Clan, one of the three major clans in the Demonic Faction. After seeing what he pulled off at the martial arts tournament, I thought he was someone who would think ahead in these situations. Unless he's far more distracted with other things. With how things are, I can't see any way for those in Flendon to get out of this. Lintz was trying to figure out his way out of the situation. With his skills, he could easily escape from the area, but doing so in the middle of a fight might cause some suspicion, so if he was going to leave, he wondered if now was the best decision. Just as Lintz was ready to turn away, he heard the voice of a certain someone. Do you all believe in the Dark Magus? Brack said, facing toward the enemy. I heard stories from a number of you guards about him, how last time he managed to pull off a miracle, and they managed to help and protect you. Do you believe he can do the same again? Brack asked. The guards looked at each other, thinking this person was a madman. Why was he even talking about the Dark Magus when the Dark Magus wasn't even here? This time and the time before were different. I'm not asking any of that. Do you believe if the Dark Magus were here, you could pull off another miracle? Brack shouted again. To this, Andy had a big smile on his face. I believe it. It was then that a certain individual was seen coming up to the top of the wall, pulling along a crate. Of all people, it was Fixteen, a member of the Neverfall clan and close friend to Dame, who had stayed in the town of Flendon. It was quite hard getting my hands on these, but I managed to buy a lot of them back from our customers. Fixteen then dug his hand into the crate and tossed out a bunch of pills. Those on the ground caught them and looked at the round chi pills, seeing the markings of DM on them. Those are the pills of the Dark Magus, created by him. I'm sure you all know their effects. This whole thing is simpler than you guys think, Fixteen said. So their numbers are larger than ours. That just means each of you needs to fight ten of them. That's all. I'm sure you can all count to ten. That's all you need to do. 
It was a strange pep talk, Jarlston and Andy thought, since the number seemed intimidating, but oddly, the others started to count to ten. They had the image in their heads of taking out one person at a time, going through them, and coming out victorious in the end. They're here, Brack said. All of you, stay back for now. Brack bent his knees and then jumped out from his position onto the sand. He skidded ahead, at least fifty meters from where the wall was, while the army was twenty meters away from him. Lintz, seeing this, was quite baffled by the student's actions. You've sure changed a lot since the martial arts tournament. Did the student know, the Dark Magus, have this much effect on you? It seems that not only the people of this town believe in him, but you believe in him as well, Lintz thought. Rather than turning around, Lintz decided it might be best for him to stay and at least see the outcome of everything that was going to take place. Shamo! Brack screamed at the top of his lungs, pouring his chi into his vocals. We don't have to get the whole town involved in this mess. Fight me in a duel. The whole army of 20,000 warriors came to a stop. All of it was done without a single word, because Shamo's chi could be felt by them all. Just a slight change, and the army knew what to do. Seeing Shamo walk out, Brack needed to be ready. This was the only card he could play the only thing he could think of to buy some time, and he knew it wouldn't be much time. Don't let these people down, Dark Magus. Chapter 838, A New Item, The Crimson Crane Rays had made up his mind. He was going to go to the town of Flendon to face Shamo and his behemoth clan. Having met him in the martial arts tournament, he could guess the man's personality. There was a deep grudge he had with Rays, and the fact that now he held the title of leader of the Dark Faction it was just even more reason for Shamo to go after him. Shamo was a very petty man, and Reyes had managed to catch his eyes in a number of ways. The fact that the town of Flendon was attacked without Reyes even being there just went ahead and showed it. This wouldn't stop until Shamo was dealt with. There were other reasons for Reyes going as well, some of them to do with the feelings of others around him. Others were for his personal gain. Rays was walking around the main academy building, heading from room to room. Since he had decided to head off, he was asking everyone if they wished to come. He wouldn't force them into a fight that he had decided on. He could guess most of their answers, as everyone was practically saying they were willing to go. While walking down the hallway, Rays looked at his hand. If I defeat Sha Mo and absorb him with the demonic extraction technique, that should definitely increase my stage level. With that, I'm sure I'll be able to perform more of the Dark Edge sword arts. Ray's thought. If that happens, then I'll be ready. I'll be ready to face the Grand Magus. Window pub future tags. Window pub future tag. Window pub future tag. Push. Unit. 648CC36CO4B3273F9C2E2. ID. pf 463D-1. Strength-wise, Ray's was sure he could phase the Grand Magus, at least on their own one by one, but he knew there would still be a number of issues still in Pagna to deal with. In the first place, he needed to find the Golden Globe to even get to Alterian. Rays had then entered the library and could see that most of the Crimson Crane were already gathered and had their weapons on them. Have you made your mind up then, on what you're planning to do? Reno asked. Yeah, I'm heading to Flendon, and I plan to take on Shamo and get rid of him once and for all, Rays said. I haven't had time to create your weapons yet. The only one that's ready is Forma's. Mine's ready. Forma jumped up and down, her whole face turning bright red. She couldn't believe it. Rays hadn't given the Crimson Crane any type of order for when the others would get special weapons. He was just making them as he had the materials ready. Even then, it took several tries before something would be created that satisfied him. Out of all of them, only Forma's weapon was ready. If you head to my crafting room, I'm sure you will be able to pick up the right one. If you can, bring all of the failures with you as well. Forma nodded with excitement as she went ahead and already ran past Rays, looking for a new weapon. The others who had yet to get weapons were a little envious of Forma. Lily was waiting on a new spear, there was Kronker who was hoping for some new daggers, and lastly, there was Alba herself. So where do you want us? Alba asked. Come to the meeting room from before, and I will explain to you all what we're going to do, 
but I came to tell you in person. You guys don't have to come. The decision is up to you. The other members looked at Alba. The answer was obvious to them as well. We all enjoyed our time in Flendon, and before even coming here, we were already content with making it our home. We got on with a lot of people and made a few friends. We'll be there and wait for you as soon as Forma comes back. Rays had now visited everyone that was inside of the academy. Now there was just one more place he needed to go to and have a talk with. Outside of the main academy, outside of the courtyard walls. Rays had entered the outer city. He had switched to a robe to cover himself rather than wearing his blazer, which stood out quite a bit. If others saw the dark Magus out in the open with his white hair, he was sure that it would cause quite the fuss, and Fina, lie he had made it to a certain location, he looked up at the signboard, so Zahn decided to relax here of all places, the perfect noodles shop, just, just what is he doing? Rays said. Forma had rushed and barged straight into Rays' research room. The moment she had entered a waft of air had touched her body and inhaled into her insides. She felt sick, and her entire body was covered in goosebumps as she shivered. What is this place, and why does it feel even darker than outside? Is it my eyes? Forma rubbed them, but still the room was darker than any of the other rooms for some reason. Trying to ignore her body's natural reaction, she ventured inside and could see piles of discarded weapons, daggers, spears, and dual swords. It was clear they were items for the other members of the Crimson Crane. Heading toward them, Forma looked at the dual swords up close. These are the failures he's talking about. I knew there was something wrong in the head with that guy. Forma said, no one in their right mind would consider these failures. Alba would be over the moon with swords like these. She reached out to touch them, but before her fingertips touched the dual swords she had stopped. Ah, I remember what Teelan said about his shield. I wouldn't want something like that to happen to me. Forma said with a happy smile and started to swing her arms. She then could see a large pile of bows, and not just bows but arrows in the corner of the room. And just like the other equipment, she couldn't believe they were called failures. Just how much would one of these things sell for? And they all are just here lying around. I guess Ray's wants to give them to the people of Flendon, and they won't even know that what they have is so precious in their hands. As she looked at the pile of bows, though, something was calling to her from behind. Turning around, Forma looked at the table, where there was a large piece of cloth. The indented parts made it clear that it was covering up a bow. This is it, right? This is the weapon that I was looking for. It's right here. Placing her hand on the edge of the cloth, she couldn't help but drag the cloth right off the weapon, and her eyes were sparkling with delight. This is it. I can feel it. I can feel its power. This is the item that the Dark Magus made for me. Not being able to help herself, she had gone ahead and grabbed the specially crafted bow. It was mainly dark red in color, with strange swirls all around. There looked to be no pattern to the bow itself, other than the odd swirls, but Forma could feel its power. The moment she grabbed it, though, the red swirls on the bow started to wrap around and started to grab right onto her arm. What the the next moment, Forma let out an almighty scream. Chapter 839, Zahn's Happiness After making sure they had everything they needed, the Crimson Crane had moved from the library into the main meeting room in the academy. Upon entering, they could see that most of the others had already arrived. Anna was present, along with Liam and Safa. Richtor had come along with Mata, and Reyna was still there as well, among the others that had decided to come on the trip. The only person from the core group not present was Amir. It was a given that he would stay with the rest of the Bonham Society members looking after the academy. Someone needed to stay behind. On top of that, Zahn was also absent because Rays was somewhere out there trying to find him. I'm a bit more confident now, Kieser said, slinging his large sword on his back. Last time we defended the town, we had a lot fewer people than this, and everyone here is quite strong. Right. But last time Shamo wasn't involved, Reno reminded them. It will be a tough fight either way, so we can't let our guard down. Simeon, Safa, and Liam were all nervous, but with their new weapons and tools from taking over the other dark faction clans, they were the strongest they had ever been. 
window dot pub future tag window pub future tag window pub future tag push unit six four eight c c five six four b two seven three f nine c two id pf four six three one in the current room were the strongest of the dark faction and Shamo wouldn't expect a full battle against that. I'm just looking forward to finally heading back to my clan, Mantis said. I've been here too long, and your faces annoy me. No one even bothered to comment on what Mantis said. He had been like that ever since he arrived, almost sticking around because he had no other choice. The door opened again, and part of them expected to see Rays entering, but instead, it was the small female forma. I brought it with me, Man, this stuff is kind of heavy, Forma said as she dragged the large crate and lugged it into the center. Teelan took a peek inside and could see that it was filled with weapons, each one marked with the symbol of the Dark Magus. He remembered how much the shields created by the Dark Magus had helped them all last time, and these items seemed of even better quality. Wait, didn't you go to get the weapon Ray's made for you? Alba asked, peeking behind Forma's back. Where is it? Where's the bow? It's... it's... Forma looked around, her big round eyes filling with tears. It's inside me. Forma fell to her knees and started to wail, letting out a loud cry, leaving everyone confused as to what she meant by the bow being inside her. Inside the perfect noodle shop, for once, Zahn wasn't behind the counter working. Instead, he was sitting at a table, and across from him was a hooded man. Hey, what's Zahn doing? Stanley asked. I didn't know that guy had friends. He talks to people. Sometimes, Rain said. From time to time, a woman comes to visit him. They talk for a bit, but it's the first time I've seen this hooded man. Either way, he must be important to Zahn. He stopped what he was doing and even asked me to clear a table for them. Zahn never asks me for that, not even when the woman visits. At the table, in the hooded robe, of course, was Ray's himself. So, I've told you everything. It's up to you if you want to come or not, Ray's said waiting for Zahn's response. Although the two hadn't had much time to talk about who they were or what their goals were, Reyes knew one thing about Zahn for sure. He was incredibly strong. So strong, Reyes wasn't even sure he could beat him in a fight at his current level. I will stay in the dark faction, Zahn said. You have your things to deal with, and I have mine. Right now, I've found some peace in this shop. Don't get me wrong, though. You're still important to me. Zahn placed his hand on the table and opened it up. A small square device could be seen. It then started to move, as small legs sprung out, resembling an ant. It walked over until it reached Ray's. I have two of these, Zahn explained. And only two. One of them I in, jected into your friend's neck. It's not the system he uses. Ray's had no idea what Zahn was talking about, since he hadn't really discussed with Liam how he was able to grow stronger or gather strength. Not that Ray's particularly cared. This little creature allows me to know where someone is at any point in time. I have appeared by your friend's side before. This is the second device, so when needed, I'll appear by your side. There's no need to implant it inside your body. Attach it to a piece of your clothing and remember where it is. If you need help, apply extreme pressure. If you do that, as long as I can, I'll appear. Ray's didn't know what to say. Giving him such a thing, it was handy to have. Although he didn't plan to rely on others, it was a good tool. I originally planned to give that to Anna, but since I gave it to you, it means you need to look after her in my place, Zahn explained. Ray's nodded as he picked up the device and placed it on the left side of his chest. If someone attacked his heart, he thought that would be enough pressure and enough reason to call Zahn over. With the conversation over, Ray's stood up. Good luck on your task, and next time, I hope you can enjoy a nice bowl of noodles, Zahn said. I'll be back soon. With that, Ray's headed back to the academy, and he was ready to head into battle once again. Fight after fight, it would have worn his whole body down, but he could feel it. He was close, close to getting to where he needed to be, to the Grand Magus. Chapter 840 A Gift Before You Leave Froma was in the middle of a crying fit in the meeting hall, and none of the Crimson Crane members were able to get much out of her about what she meant. They had even analyzed the other equipment that had been brought, but nothing happened when they held it. In the end, Froma wiped away her tears and was able to speak again, but she still was in no mood to discuss what had happened with the others. 
It's okay? Froma said to herself. There was a note left on the table, so I know what's happening, but it still feels weird. That strange dark magus, why didn't he put the note on top of the cloth? Froma thought back and had to admit it might have been her fault. After taking off the cloth, revealing the weapon, she had completely ignored the note on the table and went straight to grab the bow. Now she was stuck with the bow, similar to how Tylon was stuck with the shield. The rest of the group was waiting until finally, Ray's pushed open the double doors. It seems like everyone is here. Thank you for coming on this journey with me, Ray said as he pulled out a piece of chalk and started drawing on the floor. He was drawing a magic circle, a large one that would encase them all. It was similar to what he had done during the martial arts tournament, but that had taken a lot of energy and magic. To avoid completely wearing himself out, Ray's was drawing the magic circle this time. I see, Zahn hasn't come on this one. It's expected of him, Anna thought. He always went off on solo missions by himself. The only time he went along with us was when he had to. Window pub future tag, window pub future tag, window dot pub future tag dot push, unit 648C3C564B32PF463DU-1. But I can't believe what he told me. His goal? It's not to head back? I guess he still hasn't talked to Ray's about it. Anna thought. As Ray's was drawing the magic circle, he decided it was time to explain to everyone how things were going to be, because it wasn't as straightforward as last time. When we were in Flendon, I transported you all from one position to another. So I drew two magic circles, but the magic circle in Flendon is no longer there, Ray's said. Unfortunately, I haven't been back to Flendon since, so I haven't figured out how to pinpoint coordinates there nor have I set up another magic circle there, Ray's explained. I'm guessing you're telling us this because it means you'll be sending us somewhere else? Richter asked. Correct. There is one place I used to travel to frequently where I know the coordinates, a cave just outside the city of Repton, Ray's answered. That's still quite far from Flendon, Raina said. We might not reach Flendon in time before the Behemoth clan gets there. Be realistic, Mantis added. The city of Flendon is already under attack. We're going to be the cleanup crew. Reyna's fists were shaking, and Ray's knew why from their previous talk. She was unlike other Pagna warriors and actually cared about the lives of the regular citizens. Should I stop by the clan base? Dame asked. It's on the way. I could ask father for help. Father won't do anything, Reyna snapped. I was given away and am no longer part of the clan, and you abandoned it. If we step foot back there and ask for help, how do you think he'd react? The two of them stopped after that suggestion. We won't know the state of Flendon until we get there. There should be no other thoughts in one's head, Ray said. The reason I'm telling you this is to not waste any time. Some of us in this group are faster than others. When you get to the demonic faction, I want you to head to Flendon as quickly as possible. The others nodded, and Ray's finished drawing the circle. You guys will go first, and then I'll need to draw another circle after. I'll be right behind you. With that said, Ray's gathered the magic in the palm of his hands and placed them on the floor. The magic circle began to light up, and a bright light surrounded everyone and everything inside it. The light grew larger and larger until it consumed them, and when the flash of light disappeared, so did the rest of the group. Standing up, Ray's took a blue chi pill. It wasn't the cursed pill. The regular chi pill would be enough to restore his mana so he could fight before taking a cursed chi pill. I used a lot of mana sending them off, but I think it's better having them there rather than just myself, Ray's thought. Taking the chalk, he started to draw his own circle on the raised platform he was on. At the same time, he was cultivating, trying to do what Safa was able to do to get his energy back. He was focused, trying to enter a flow-like state where he could draw and cultivate at the same time. Then his concentration was broken. I expected there to be more people here, a voice said. I guess the new dark faction leader doesn't need people around him. The voice wasn't one Ray's recognized. He had just finished drawing the magic circle as well. If he wanted to, he could activate the circle now, sending him to where the others were. Instead, Ray's decided to lift his head, and the moment he did, his eyes widened, 
and he clenched his teeth hard as he stood upright. Ah, it seems you recognize what I have in my hand right here, the stranger said as he moved his right hand, holding the round object steady. You know what this is, right? The object being held by the stranger's hand was being held by its hair. The round object could be seen clearly, and Ray's heart was thumping even louder. Poor Himmy, the man said, shaking his head. Chapter 841, Challenging a Monster The flash of light blinded the entire group that was surrounded by, by the magic circle. They all felt a tingling sensation through their bodies as they could see nothing in front of them. As the light began to fade, suddenly new scenery appeared around them. They were now in a dimly lit cave and were quite cramped inside. That felt strange, really strange, Mata said. Did it? I thought it felt kind of nice, Richtor answered. Mata just gave him an uncomfortable look, wondering how anyone could like that feeling. Then again, he remembered Richter was always strange compared to the rest. It always amazes me, honestly, Kieser said. How a human can do something like this. How can the things in our body just move us around like that? I guess that's why they call it magic, Lily replied. Enough talking, you guys, Alba said. Remember what Ray said, we need to head to the town of Flendon straight away. Window.pub future tag equals window.pub future tag. Window pub future tag push. Unit 648C3C5604 3273F9C2 IPF4630-1. The group moved to the exit and away spot where they had entered, but upon looking behind them, they were a little worried. Rays should only be a few moments, maybe minutes, behind them. I can stay behind, Kronker said. I'm the fastest, so I'll be able to catch up as soon as he arrives to give you peace of mind. No, Reyna said, because you are the fastest, you should head to Flendon first. You could save a large number of lives. I want to wait for Rays too, but waiting will do nothing. I'll stay. Dame replied. I'm pretty fast on my feet as well. The rest of you go. It'll be fine. I'm just as fast as Ray's, so don't be surprised if the two of us get to Flendon before you. Now no questions. Just scram. Reyna didn't say anything else, and neither did Safa or Alba. They all left at that instant, heading to the town of Flendon. While Dame waited in the cave, he began tapping his foot impatiently on the floor. The taps grew louder and louder. Rays, you should be here by now. Has something happened to you? Dame said to himself. But that's impossible, right? We were all there with you in the room. Nothing could have happened to you. But then why aren't you here? It's not like I can just head back to the academy and help you out. Come on, Rays. Come on. Dame felt useless, unable to help Rays, but the fact that several minutes had already passed and there was still no sign of him weighed heavily on his mind. Several times now, Dame had seen Ray's push himself too far. Even when he did, he would move from one task to the next. If he had pushed himself again in a troubling situation and arrived here, he might need Dame's help to get him to Flendon, depending on his condition. If he had to, Dame would even force him not to go if there was any risk of Ray's losing his life. At the town of Flendon, the guards standing at the north gate were doing everything in their power not to turn and run. They hadn't realized that some at the back had already done just that. In front of them, they could see the true might of the behemoth clan. All its members were about a hundred meters away from them, and if the full force were to charge at once, they couldn't even imagine being able to defend against such an attack. The only reason some of them stayed and held their ground was because a young warrior had jumped out in front of them and screamed at the top of his lungs, challenging the others to a duel. Come on! Brack shouted. The Behemoth clan is one of the three major clans in the demonic faction. Right now, everyone knows you'd win a battle with the numbers you have. The people behind us aren't even warriors from a clan. Isn't it embarrassing to use your numbers to take over a town? Why don't you prove that you're one of the three major clans, not just because of your size, but because of your strength as well? Brack was shaking inside, his entire body betraying his fear, and he couldn't believe the words coming out of his mouth. Shamo's large size and frame came to the forefront as he looked at Brack. What words to be spoken by someone who literally abandoned our clan, Shamo stated. So this is where you ran off to in the end, and now you challenge us when you couldn't even hack it in the behemoth clan. Ha! The single loud laugh 
filled with chi, forced Brack's feet to skid slightly across the sand, and it was just from the sound of his voice. On the wall itself, Fixteen, Jarlston, and Lintz, who were watching everything, couldn't believe what was happening. If he turned around and ran right now, I don't think anyone would blame him, Fixteen said, and the other two nearby thought the same. That doesn't change anything, Brack said. My words are still true. The Dark Magus and the Crimson Crane aren't here. So why bring such a large number of people? You're using all your power to wipe out an ant. Maybe the Behemoth Clan has no strong warriors, which is why you won't accept my duel. Brack shouted again. Shama was quite surprised. No one would dare speak to him in such a way in the Behemoth Clan, certainly not a student. And now, because a person was on the other side, they felt free to talk like that. Very well, Shamo said, but that's when another figure with long black hair tied in a ponytail jumped out in front. The person was tall but not large like Shamo, who looked like a descendant of a giant. I am Umanki, one of the pillars of the Behemoth clan. It would be an insult if the clan head accepted this duel. You said there is no one strong in the Behemoth clan, so I will take you on. Umanki turned and bowed to Shamo, jumping into position and landing around ten meters away from Brack. Chapter 8 and 42. Cheer for him. Brack wasn't going to argue about facing Umanki rather than Shamo. It wasn't because Umanki was weak by any means, but there still wasn't a part of Brack that felt he could best Umanki in battle. For one, Brack was an initial stage warrior at his peak, while Umanki was a middle stage warrior and quite a strong one at that. Even if it wasn't someone from the Behemoth clan, it was still a giant uphill battle for Brack. Still, there was one thought going through his mind. At least he would last longer against Umanki than he would against Shamo. Umanki pulled out a long curved sword from his back. He swung it in the air a few times as if he was warming up. Each swing sliced the air, and a piercing high-pitched sound could be heard coming from the weapon. While Brack held out his own sword, it was regular, nothing special. In the first place, he focused more on martial arts-based techniques but had a sword to help him in certain situations. In normal circumstances, the two of us would have never met in battle, Umanka said. Unfortunately for you, since you are no longer part of the clan, it means that now, killing you is an option as well. Umanki charged forward, wasting no time, and the Behemoth clan, seeing this, chuckled and cheered for their fellow teammate. No one did the same for Brack especially considering he was a traitor, and the people of Flendon were more afraid of what was going to happen to their lives. Brack reacted to the attacker charging right at him. He strengthened his stance and threw out his sword at the right time. Window.pub future tag. Window.pub future tag. Window.pub future tag. Push. Unit 6483356489C2EU. Eid PF-463 one I haven't just been sitting around doing nothing this entire time. A strange feeling had overcome Brack in that moment. He couldn't feel his sword hit anything, but he was sure of it. He saw with his own eyes his sword make contact with Umanki. Yet what he saw didn't feel like reality. Because his sword had just gone right through Umanki's. Now that Brack was on the other side, looking at his own weapon, he saw half of it falling to the floor. It had been completely cut through, and Brack didn't even feel any resistance. I poured all of my chi into reinforcing the sword, so how did it break so easily? Brack turned around, and the moment he did, he saw Umanki right upon him. For having the guts to go up against me, I don't think you deserve death, so take this punishment instead. Umanki slammed his fist deep into Brack's stomach, lifting him in the air. Then, with a jump, Umanki slammed the back of his heel into Brack's back. Excruciating pain coursed through Brack's entire body, and before he knew it, he had crashed into the ground. A large amount of sand and dust spread out. Brack was coughing up specks of blood, and he didn't look like he was in any condition to fight. You spoke badly about the Behemoth clan, and what for, to protect this town? Umanki said. Well, with your own eyes, you can witness its downfall. The sight of Brack losing in front of them had only caused the fear among the guards of Flendon to grow. Some of them had never gone up against Panya warriors before. To witness superhuman feats right in front of them, fast movement, extreme strength, and jumping power was something none of them could ever imagine beating. 
Of course, not all Pagna warriors were obviously strong compared to regular citizens. They had witnessed one of the pillars fighting, but the people didn't really understand or know that. Lince couldn't help but feel slightly bad for the sight he was seeing. I know you meant well, young one, but you might have just crushed the will of everyone here to fight. From the beginning, the difference between the two of you was too large. As Lince finished his thought, though, he started to slow down as he saw something he didn't expect. And everyone else was looking at it, too. Brack was standing up. He stood on his feet again, no sword in hand, blood dripping from his mouth onto High's clothing. I would have expected the pillars, the pillars, Brack said, to take me out, but look, I'm still standing. I guess you're not as strong as I thought you were. Brack charged forward again and went to deliver a kick while Umanki wasn't looking. Umanki stepped to the side, avoiding the kick, and then grabbed the back of Brack's head, slamming it into the floor. Brack's eyes rolled to the back of his head, his nose cracked, and for the second time, he seemed to be dealt with. With that, Umanki was ready to walk back to the behemoth group, ready to start the charge, until he heard the sound of his own men gasping, and others as well. He's up again, he's standing up again. Brack was standing, wobbling on his feet for a few moments, but he soon took a fighting stance. His mouth was moving, but no words came out. How is he still standing? Fixteen said. Why is he still standing? It's all pointless. It's not, Andy said. He believed the Dark Magus, the Crimson Crane, would be here to save us. We have to believe it. Come on. Andy screamed the last words at the top of his lungs. He continued to cheer, and in doing so, the others on the wall started to cheer as well. Soon, those on the ground began to cheer for Brack. Initially, when he stepped up to fight, not a single person was cheering for him. Now, after seeing clearly that Brack had no way of winning the fight, they were cheering for him. They didn't understand it themselves, but seeing Brack trying so hard for them, it was the least they could do. Fine, I didn't want to do this, Umanki said, but let's see if they can cheer when I cut off your head. Umanki charged forward, his sword swinging right for Brack's head. Just before it reached him, a loud clang was heard, and a person appeared right by Brack's side. Who are you? Umanki said, surprised to see his sword stopped. I guess I really was the first one here, Kronker said worriedly. There's a lot more of you than I thought. Chapter 843 The Deleter Scar Everything was set up in Reyes's mind. He would deal with the trouble that was taking place in the demonic faction, in turn gaining strength, and afterward he would have a meeting with Belil from the Neverfall clan. Before then, he would head back to the Dark Faction, the Academy, to see if everything was okay, because there would always be this worry in the back of his mind that Alter had sent one of these so-called deleters to the scene. For one, Reyes didn't think Alter would act so fast. If they truly felt he was the real Dark Magus and a person who could rise to the top of the Dark Faction, they would play the slow game and try to get him in one swoop. That was unless they truly believed in the strength of these deleters. As for the second reason, it was because Reyes believed in Himmy, believed that he would do as he said and buy time. Right now, Reyes was in the meeting room, standing there. His fist was clenched, his jaw was tight, and he hadn't blinked as he looked at the round object that was held in the strange man's hand, the intruder. It wasn't just any object, it was a head, and it was the head of Himmy, having been dissected from his body, now being held in the intruder's hand. Himmy, Reyes thought. He was one of the first otherworlders I met, one of the few people I met that seemed to have half a brain cell in this world. We didn't get to talk much, and it was hard to say he was even a friend. But in the end, he risked his life to help me when he didn't have to. When he left this place at that time, he probably knew this would be the result. Things could have been different. Window pub future tag, window pub future tag, window pub future tag dot push, unit, 648C3C560423SUE2 eyed PF4630-1. Himmy's death is on your hands, the man said. You know, my orders weren't to get rid of him. They had sent one of those squads to get him. With his skills, they probably never would have caught him. He could have gone and lived his life somewhere in Pagna, in a relaxing village. I never understood the guy. He was a hard worker, 
but never wanted to rise up in the organization. Do you know anyone like that? I don't. The man continued to yap and then threw Himmy's head in the air. It bounced and rolled across the floor until it hit the platform where Ray's was standing. The people that sent you, I assume you're talking about Alter? Ray's asked. Although he was filled with anger, it was clear it was a trick to get him to act first. Right now, Ray's needed to figure out who this person was. For one, were they a mage? A Pagna warrior that used martial arts? Did they use specialized weapons like those from Himmy's world? Or did they have some sort of powers, maybe someone like Zahn? On top of that, there were a large number of items that Alter could have handed him to use, and information was the key to this entire battle. Ha! I guess you're not as foolish as I thought, or Himmy told you a lot before he decided to do his little trick, the intruder said with a smile. I wonder how much he told you, for you see, I am a deleter, the man known as Scar. Well, maybe known isn't the right word, because not many know my name. After all, as a deleter, and even before becoming one, I always completed my missions. Ray's guess was spot on. Right now, though, Ray's was trying to decide what to do. The best way to test him with magic or Pagna skills, to try and get him to reveal his power. That's when he noticed something else. The door is still shut? Ray's thought. If the door is still shut, how did he manage to get inside? No wonder I was unable to sense him, and he appeared out of nowhere. Ray's was growing more concerned, and so he decided to give it a go. Black magic surrounded his arm, and quickly, a new light sword appeared, made with his wind enchantment. It was light and silent. Moving his hand down, filled with chi and wind magic, Ray's struck using the crimson slash. It was faster and sharper than the crimson slashes he had performed in the past, cutting a straight line down the room. The floorboards had a deep cut in them, and so did the wall at the other end, but it hadn't hit its target, there was no blood. That was a fast attack, a really fast attack, the voice said from his side. Turning his head, Ray's could see, slightly to his left, that Scar was standing there completely fine. If we had met when I was younger, I would have stood no chance. That strike was nearly as fast as a bullet, maybe a little slower, Scar stated. Didn't you come here to get rid of me? Ray said, holding the sword in his hand. If I were you, I would be much more scared. After all, there is a reason why Alter, your bosses, want to get rid of me. Lightning magic started to expel from Ray's legs as he prepared to attack with his next move. He couldn't see where Scar had moved to. It didn't look like Scar had moved at all. His whole body seemed to disappear and reappear, so Ray's just needed to be even faster. I think you've got something wrong there, something really wrong, Scar said with a smile. They would never send a deleter like me just to get rid of one person. I've been ordered to get rid of this entire place. Before Ray's could even swing his sword, Scar had disappeared. Ray's looked around, trying to find him, but he couldn't see or feel anyone's presence inside the room. I have a bad feeling about this. Chapter 844, Delete the Dark Faction The Academy in the Dark Faction had been operating the same way it had done in the past. Students were taking part in monthly assessments, allowing them to improve their skills and share their knowledge. After the Dark Magus's display of power over a month ago, the sign-ups to the Academy had actually increased compared to before, and there was a larger stream of students entering the academy after they learned from others that things were a bit easier. The assessments were less about life and death, and the teacher's focus had shifted to the honor of the dark faction and fostering a competitive drive to be the best, without the need for survival assessments that were live or die. Right now, in the Red Headband group, a teacher was on stage set up outside in the courtyard in front of the Red Headband building. Although many of you take pride in learning your own clan's skills and wish to prove that they are the best or advance them, it is important to learn a wide variety of skills, the teacher explained. A lot of Pagna warriors know many base techniques that your clan's skills might have been built upon. The more skills you know, the more you will understand other clans, techniques and ways to counter them. If there truly was just a single skill that could beat everything out there, then everyone would just learn that. But different skills and techniques are used in different assessments. So today, I want you to analyze your opponent's skills 
the teacher explained. Do you all understand? The students nodded, even though they didn't seem too pleased with the lesson for the day. It sounded quite boring to them. In the middle of their nods, though, they noticed something. Window.pubfuture tag equals window pub future tag. Emmer window dot pub future tag you push unit six four eight c three three four two seven three f nine c two e two idf pf four six three dash one who's that one of the students asked pointing at the stage the teacher turned to look at the individual and noticed a person they had never seen before he looked like an ordinary man the students don't seem to be too interested in your lesson here the man said who are you no one is allowed to be in the academy without permission the teacher said. I think we should give them a new lesson for today. Let's see how long they can survive. What are you? Bang! A loud echoing sound was heard throughout the entire courtyard. It was a sound the students weren't used to, and when they looked at where it had come from, it was a small object held in the stranger's hand. What was worse was the fact that the teacher had fallen over with a small hole in his head. He collapsed to the ground, and blood was pooling on the stage. He killed him. He killed the teacher. Someone quickly. We have to go and inform the other teachers. We're under attack. The students were in a panic, and as one turned to exit the courtyard, the loud bang was heard again. A small object could be seen going right through the back of the student's head, thus causing them to fall to the floor, their body lifeless, just like the teacher. My mission is to delete everyone in this academy. So don't worry. None of you will be left out. Scar said, as he pulled out two handguns and aimed them into the crowd. Soon, the resounding bangs started to go off, one after another, into the many students. Screams were heard as the students started to break off, going in different directions, trying to escape from what was happening. Not everyone was running away, though. Being the Pagna warriors that they were, and seeing only one enemy in front of them, some went for the target. If we can get rid of him, then this will stop. The students boosted themselves with chi, jumping through the air. Scar was quick to react and shot a couple of the students coming at him. He hit one in the chest and another by the side. Still, there were too many students coming at him, allowing one to come over to the right side of him. The student thrust his sword forward, but realized he had hit nothing but air. Where did that he go? The student shouted, before another bang was heard and his vision went black as he collapsed on the stage. The others looked up and could see the man was suddenly on the roof of the red headband building, and the loud bangs just didn't stop. Some had tried to scale the side of the building by jumping up and running up the pillars. It was an easy task for Pagna warriors, but with Scar having the high ground, he could see them from all angles, and he fired away with ease. Come on, this is the first time I've been asked to take out a big target, the others had their fair share done already. I thought this would be harder. The students on the ground floor were losing hope that they could take out the figure, and so they started to run toward the exit. Some of them had exited from the red headband onto the main courtyard. In doing so, they were running either to the closest headband group or to the main academy to get some help. Some didn't know where they were going, they were just running. This didn't go unnoticed by Scar and seeing it, he had a large defeated sigh. The job was to leave no survivors, and I always complete my job perfectly. The gun in Scar's hand disappeared, and instead, a green round object could be seen in its place. Pulling a pin from the top, he threw the green round object onto the ground right by the exit, where a large number of people were running from, and moments later, after bouncing, it exploded. Pieces of shrapnel lodged into multiple students, trying to get out. Time to cause more of a mess, Scar said, as his whole body disappeared from the rooftop, heading to another location. Chapter 845, Chaos Strikes the Academy The normal setup of the headband students in the academy was present, with the yellow headband students and the blue headband students' areas breaking off from the main courtyard. They were also conducting their lessons outside in the main courtyard, following a similar lesson when they heard explosions in the distance. What is going on? The students asked. Probably just one of the students doing a bit too much. The teacher of the yellow headband said. The other teachers nearby can handle the problem.
There were three yellow headband teachers giving the students tips and overseeing them. They were spread out among the courtyard. As they were going through their lessons, the doors burst wide open and they could see a few red headband students charging in, falling to the floor. Some of their clothes were covered in blood. Close the damn door behind us quickly. Don't let him in. The red headband student shouted. Window dot pub future tag equals window pub future tag in. Window pub future tag dot push six four eight C three C five six four B three two seven zero zero three F nine C two E two ID PF four six three zero dash one. The other two were quick to get on their feet and close the door behind them. As they were shutting it, they could see students running toward them, but they still closed it shut anyway and decided to stay by the door. Soon, loud bangs were heard on the door. No, please let us in, let us in, the students screamed. Not only did they scream, but they were soon using their chi to try and attack the door, but equally, the students on the other side who were holding the door were using chi to push it back as well. What is going on? One of the teachers asked. How dare you not open the door to your fellow students? What do you think you're doing? You don't understand, one of the red headband students said. There's an intruder. He killed Teacher Ren. He's killing all the students. He has this item that's throwing small metal balls, killing everyone. We can't let him in. Otherwise, everyone will die. The teacher could see that the student had clearly gone through something. There was blood on his clothes, and another had a wound on his body. It didn't appear to be from a sword, yet they were so frightened that they were ignoring the pain. If there really is someone attacking the academy students, then even more reason why we have to let them in. We can't just let students stay out there. Move aside, both of you, or I'll deal with you myself. The students gulped and listened to their teacher's words. The moment they moved aside, the doors swung open and a group of students, about five or so, ran in. The doors were shut behind them, and just like the students from before, they quickly shut the door and held it closed. Where is the rest of your class? Where are the rest of them? The teacher asked. I'm not sure. We all ran in different directions. Some weren't even able to escape, one of the female students explained. I saw some running to the main academy and to the blue headband students. Ah! There was so much blood, so much blood. The teacher was trying to grasp what was going on and what the best course of action would be. If there was a large-scale attack, he should have seen multiple people, but from the sound of things, there was only a single person. I'll head to the main academy and inform Principal Amir. He will deal with the situation. The rest of you stay put and let the teachers do all the worrying. Just as he was about to head to the gate door, clapping noises could be heard. The teacher turned around and saw a strange man. Immediately, the red headband students fell to their knees in shock. It's him. It's him. Get away from him, the female student screamed. The teacher was still unable to comprehend what was happening and was getting ready to act when a loud bang was heard and no longer could his mind process anything as he fell to the floor. Another one deleted from the world of Pagna, Scar said. You know, he was a good teacher. Maybe if I had someone like him, I wouldn't have ended up the way I am. Scar disappeared from where he was, and with the students looking around, they could see he was now right next to one of the other teachers in the courtyard. A bang noise went off, and Scar disappeared again. Behind you, sir, a student shouted, but it was too late. The same bang noise was heard, and now none of the teachers were left alive. Just like that, moving around each area, there was a person who was able to take out a large number of them. The loud sound of bangs continued, and even more students were startled than before. A repeat of what had occurred at the red headband area was now happening at the yellow headband area, and soon the same thing would happen at the blue headband area. As students scattered across the main large courtyard, some of them still bleeding, they headed into the main building. However, the majority of them, after seeing their teachers fail to protect them, felt it was useless. No one could defeat this person who was using tools, possibly artifacts, that they had never seen before, so they decided to exit out of the main academy area. The wall is just up ahead. We can hide out in the main town, one of the students shouted. He won't be able to find all of us, and we can just escape. 
There were around 50 or so students running toward the main exit. It looked to be a hundred meters up ahead. Usually, a distance they could cover in less than 10 seconds, but it felt so long to them, and before they knew it, the strange man had appeared in front of them once more. There are too many of you to deal with just handguns. Let's switch to something a bit faster, Scar said, as the handguns disappeared from his hands, and now he was holding two larger weapons, known as Uzis. I might be able to go home before dinner at this rate. 